Hello everyone, my name's Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been planning on making a video for the last three days and uh, to cut a long story short, my memory stick corrupted, which ended up in me having to spend tens of hours recovering the files and spending nearly a hundred pounds. It was an absolute disaster, but yeah, anyway, I'm back. I'm making three videos at once. The other two require a little bit more planning than this one. So I guess I thought I'd just start off with something a bit more laid back. The other two videos I'm making it if you're interested. One of them is an update to my getting started with Age of Sigma series that I made years ago. They did really well, they were really popular, and I noticed that people are still watching it. And that means that they're watching information that is quite out of date, so I thought I'd do an updated 2020 edition of that. The other one is my discussion of Warcry. So those things are coming, just be patient, they're on the way. Now, Warhammer Underworlds <laughs> Online. This game has been out in physical form for a really long time. A while ago, the company making the video game adaption contacted me and said, did you want a review copy? Another long story cut short, they uh, ended up forgetting to send me the copy because the lady who originally approached me ended up leaving the company. But I emailed them and said, hang on a minute, where's my copy? The game's just come out and I haven't even had a copy of it. And... Um, yeah, they were really kind. They sent me a copy. They apologised. They said, no, we didn't forget you. Don't worry. It was just a case that she left, basically. So what I thought I'd do is I've been playing this non-stop in between recovering those files. I'm absolutely addicted to it. I'm going to have some footage playing in the background of a match I played this morning, which I ended up annihilating the Skaven team. Bit of luck involved. A bit of me really getting to grips with the tactics involved in playing. But super, super quickly, I'm guessing you know what Warhammer Underworlds is by now. If you don't, it's a standalone box game that was released alongside Age of Sigma a few years ago. There are now, I think there's been three editions of that box game. There was Shadespire, Night Vault, and I think the current one is uh, Beast Grave or something like that. They're really cool. I've owned all of them. I made a video review of the first one. But truth be told, I didn't end up playing that much of Warhammer Underworlds. And part of that problem was I found that the rules were quite convoluted and uh, complicated. It turns out from playing this game, the rules are actually dead simple. It's not difficult to learn. It's not difficult to play. I guess it's just the way that the rules were either written or explained in some of the videos I watched on YouTube. But right, here's some of the thoughts I've written down. I've written down some notes here. Number one, this is what I consider to be the very first true, real, proper Age of Sigmar video game. Now, I know there's a mobile game, which I think is called Realm War, and I haven't played that yet. I've downloaded it this morning. I'll give it a go. But being that kind of game, I already know what to expect from it. And after a week, I'm pretty sure there will be timers that will block me from doing things unless I pay money. And yeah, we all know how those style of games go. The other one that has come out, which was actually pretty decent, was the Age of Sigmar Champions card game. But this one feels more video gamey. It's all 3D and fun, and it's got enemy models that attack each other with animations, and it's all quite exciting. Now, the first thing I have to say, based on the fact that I didn't play a lot of the game due to the complicated mechanics or perceived complicated mechanics, is the tutorials in this game are fantastic. I've seen criticism in other articles about these tutorials. I have to say I totally disagree. I more or less went in completely blind to this game. I couldn't remember how to play it. I couldn't remember how the turn sequence worked, the cards, when to use them, how to use them, what they do, the glory point system. I couldn't remember anything about it. And essentially the game is all about collecting these glory points. You can use the glory points to upgrade your fighters. You randomly draw those upgrade cards. You randomly draw some objective cards. And those objective cards range from capturing enemy objectives or the objectives that are placed around the board to um, taking out enemy leaders or models, maybe not taking any damage in a battle round. It's kind of random. It's fun. It's tactical. I love the fact that even capturing the objectives is down to the cards you draw so the enemy has no idea what those cards are you've drawn you can keep them hidden and it's only when you maybe make a mad dash to try and reach objective five they think oh, okay he's got the card for objective five I need to step in the way and intervene it makes for a very tense and tactical and fun game 
But the other thing I want to say about this is how faithful a translation it feels of the core game. It feels like it's all there, it's all present. I know that the base game now is absolutely enormous. I think I read somewhere that there are over a thousand cards that are kind of legal in competitive play. There are now 22 different warbands you can use. There's a whole host of different um, game boards as well. So the actual core game is a pretty big thing. Now I guess that brings us onto a slight negative of the online version in that because it's come out quite a long time after the core game, it means that it's playing catch up. There's a lot that's not there. There's only a few warbands at the moment, but they're saying that these warbands are on the way. Personally, I wish the company would be a little bit more transparent with what their plans are, what are they bring out, when are they bringing it out, how much are they going to cost. It's little things like that that I think really help people to get on board with things like this. I think in any form of wargaming, whether it's Warhammer um, 40k, Age of Sigma, or any other type of wargaming, the faction you pick is a really personal and important choice to most people. I guess it's a little bit like, for want of a better analogy, football. You know, it's like really wanting to play your favourite team and then you buy FIFA and they're not in it. And I think this is something that has plagued a lot of Warhammer games in the past. Even when I'm thinking of things like Dawn of War, quite often they release with, I don't know, three or four factions and you're thinking, but the faction I play are not in the game and I don't really want to play the other factions like I like them. They're cool, I want to fight them, I don't really want to be them, I'd rather be the faction that I really care about and love. And I guess for some people, if there's like, uh, I don't know what, um, maybe six factions in the game at the moment, maybe there's a bit more than that, I'm not sure, but 22 factions in the physical game, you're going to want to play the faction that maybe you're used to playing if you're a regular to play in this game. I know at the moment I really want to play Nurgle, I really want to play Caradron Overlords, and I really want to play Gloom Spike Gits, and none of those three factions are in the game as of right now. So yeah, I'm waiting for them to uh, contact me back about their future release plans, and I guess I'll update the video when I hear anything else. Cutting content out of a game and making you pay for it later, I guess it's quite complicated for them to be building this stuff. I'm guessing they're quite a smaller studio and they probably are working incredibly hard to bring this content to us. I could bring up the game that I'm also playing at the moment, The Witcher 3, for the second time and say that there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of content in that game and that that was all included as part of the initial cost. So, you know, that's going to bother some people having to pay for additional factions. I'll probably pay for the factions myself that I really want to play and then I'll just wait for a Steam sale or something to get the other ones. But anyway, tutorials were fantastic, really clear, knew exactly what I was doing after playing them. It's a very chilled game. I love the kind of vibe with it. It's very relaxed. It's got a really nice pacing to it and it really does capture that feel of sitting down playing a game of Warhammer with someone, minus the, uh, you know, the, the all-important social interaction. But whilst we're stuck in lockdown, it's a fun game to play, and it definitely feels like the full experience, which is really cool. I love the fact that it feels pretty balanced. It doesn't feel like there's any one faction that's absolutely going to dominate at the moment. I've been using the Stormcast Eternals just whilst I've been getting used to the game and understanding the mechanics, and I've definitely got to the point where I'm quite happy with how it plays. Every so often I think the AI does something a little bit dumb where you think, okay, hang on a minute, like there's a mechanic in the game where you can knock back an opponent after you've attacked them and there was one time where he knocked me back and put me onto an objective that I needed to capture and you'd think if you had a choice of knocking someone back, you would move them back onto any space other than an objective point. So little things maybe here and there could be better, but overall the AI seems to do a really solid job. Now, a few little things that I would constructively say could be better. First of all, especially to begin with when you're getting used to the dice rolls and what the symbols on the dice mean, I think it would be good if they rolled the dice, kept the faces on the screen, and then you could click continue after you've had time to process what those rolls mean. They tend to roll the dice, they're there for about a second and a half, and then it moves on with whatever those results indicated. And sometimes when you've got six dice being rolled and you're trying to interpret all the symbols for each person and you're thinking, okay, what is the actual outcome? It would be nice to have the opportunity to do it for yourself and truly appreciate what's happening rather than just go, oh, we rolled some dice, oh yeah, he won. And I'm like, okay, why did he win? 
I want to know those things and I think it's also exactly the same for sometimes when the opponent plays a card it flashes up for far far less time than it would take for you to actually read that card sometimes something happens in the game there's this massive surge of activity you've got dice being rolled cards being played one after the other someone's attacking they've got a support character next to them they're impacting the dice rolls and all of a sudden you're like hang on a minute I'm getting a bit lost what's going on and I think it would definitely be nice if there was an option to either slow down the uh, results of the games and the mechanics where it's kind of randomly generating things and playing cards. Like there would be no reason why they couldn't hold a card up and then when you've read that card you click OK. I've read it. I understand it. And then they could have an option for auto skip dice rolls and auto skip card reading or something like that i think that would definitely make it better right next thing i think because they're pitching it as warhammer underworlds online i understand why they didn't do this but personally i think it could have benefited from maybe a cut scene or two just to set the scene make you understand what you're doing here why you're doing it why you should care I think that would have tied it up a lot neater into this more overall kind of um, comprehensive package. And personally, I would have really loved it if um, there was a campaign kind of tagged onto it, even if it was a little bit superficial, because obviously, you know, with board games, it's potentially frustrating to decide the branch paths of how um, a, a campaign could turn out depending on who's winning or losing. But they even could have done something really simple like the original Star Wars battlefront i don't know if you guys played that but they had this mode called galactic conquest and quite simply you were trying to capture as much of a region as you could and every time you were trying to capture a point you would have to go down and fight a battle and then but depending on who won either you would capture that point or they would it would have made for such a simple campaign option little bit of storyline a couple of cutscenes, and then some kind of campaign narrative where you're taking over part of shade spire or something like that and i guess the only other couple of things i would have really said is that i would have quite liked um a different mode in the game called like unlimited mode where in the actual base game you only get really to make 12 different moves or actions so there comes a point where you really really have to think about every move you're going to make whether you're bringing yourself closer to objectives, whether you're focusing on trying to take out enemy fighters. I think that they should call that classic, and I think they should have an alternative mode where it lets you basically play until you've wiped out the entire enemy team. I think that would be quite cool. I would probably end up playing classic the vast majority of the time but I guess it would be kind of cool just to have an alternative mode in there and the only other last thing I would probably say is maybe it'd be quite cool instead of just being able to zoom in and pan the camera around it'd be quite nice if you had full 3d control so you could actually 360 move the camera around and I guess in the menu the options for the graphics and the settings and everything like that are very stripped back and limited but in terms of the gameplay i'm really enjoying it it's super chilled it's super fun i can't wait to play more and it's been a very enjoyable thing to play in lockdown it's really satisfying that itch i've got at the moment to play some warhammer play something tactical turn-based it really does capture that feeling like i said of a lazy afternoon having a game of warhammer which i'm absolutely down for i really love it if i was going to give it a score i would give it probably an 85 percent I think there are a few things that need to be addressed in terms of like making it a bit more beginner friendly on those dice rolls. I definitely want to see more war bands, but more importantly, I want to know from the company what their plans are. But I also think a campaign system would have really tied it off quite nicely. So it doesn't just feel like, oh yeah, I'm doing a one-off match and then there's no implications to that. If you guys don't know what the Galactic Conquest was from the original Star Wars Battlefront, go and look it up. I think that would have worked absolutely amazing for this game, doing something kind of similar. But anyway, let me know if you've played the game. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you are actually in the original physical game and you still play it but thanks for watching and i will see you guys really soon